Hey everyone, this is Bob here at Wirefly, and we are going to do another Schmackdown. On the left, we have the Google Samsung Nexus S, the latest in technology for Android cell phones. And on the right, we have the Samsung Epic 4G, which is one of the first 4G phones on the Sprint network. The Nexus S uh, works best with T-Mobile. It can also work with AT&T, but at a slower speed. Anyway, uh, if you look at these two phones, look at their profiles. Man, these two phones look kind of similar. That's because they are kind of similar. The uh, Epic 4G is, of course, one of Samsung's famous Galaxy S class of phones. And although it doesn't say it on the Nexus S, it is made by Samsung and it is based on the same underpinnings, the same technology that's inside this Galaxy S Epic 4G Samsung phone. Those very, uh, very same technology is in the Nexus S. It uh, certainly accounts for much of the way the Nexus S looks and works. Both of these phones have a 4-inch diagonal Super AMOLED screen with 480 by 800 pixel resolution. They both look absolutely beautiful. When you look at them from the angle that you are now looking at them, the big difference is that the Nexus S has Android 2.3 in a pure Google-only form. The Epic 4G has Android 2.1, so it's down a couple of levels. And on top of that, Android 2.1 has been overlaid Samsung's TouchWiz interface. And there is no such uh, manufacturer or carrier interface on the Nexus S. It's pure Android. So if there's any future upgrades in Android, you can get them first and most easily for the Nexus S than you can with the Samsung Epic 4G. So uh, that's one very big difference as we look at these phones. We have Android 2.1 here, Android 2.3 here. And uh, some of the other things as you look at these phones, both of these phones have front-facing cameras. So if you are into doing video chat, both of these phones are going to make you happy. Uh, both of these phones have uh, all of the normal Android features that you can get, including buttons down here to enable you to get your menu items to go back to your main page and so forth. You've got all those here as well on the Nexus S. And so, what makes these phones different? Okay, uh, in addition to the difference between Android 2.3 and Android 2.1, and that accounts for a big performance difference, I'll talk about that in a moment, one gigantic difference between these two phones is that the Nexus S is slim and sleek while the Epic 4G is much thicker. Look at that. Let me move them over here where you can see it just a little bit better. The Nexus S is much, excuse me, the Epic 4G is much thicker. That's because the Epic 4G has a slide out keyboard. And it's a very good keyboard too. This is the only phone that I can recall, there may be some others, that have five rows of keys, and that means there's a dedicated row for numbers on the keyboard. So it's got a full QWERTY keyboard with a dedicated row of numbers. Very convenient. In addition, the Android menu keys that you would normally get here on the face of the phone are also on the keyboard right here. So if you need to go back to your home page, one touch there takes you back to your home page. If you want to do a one touch search, that button there will take you there. Very convenient. So this is one of the nice, if not the nicest, keyboard of any sliding keyboard in any Android phone, and that's on the Epic 4G. The Nexus S does not have that. However, it's got a perfectly good um, on-screen keyboard. Once you rotate the phone around, you get a perfectly good keyboard that's pretty easy to type with. Now, some people are going to ask, well, golly, do you get that here on the uh, Epic 4G? And yes, you do. You also can get a on-screen keyboard with the uh, Epic 4G. Notice that the keys are shaped a little differently. The uh, keys on the Nexus S are a little, uh, a little less tall and a little wider, and the keys on the Epic 4G are a little taller and a little narrower. So. Uh, interesting, but they both work the same way. But the killer here is the very nice keyboard. If you want a physical slide-out keyboard, the Epic 4G has got one of the best that you can get. Okay, let's go back to, 
into some of the uh, rest of the features of these phones. Now these phones come with memory right out of the box. The Nexus S has 16 gigabytes of built-in RAM. However, if you take the cover off, there's no place in the phone to install any additional RAM. There is no micro SD slot for additional RAM. As you can see there, that is the SIM card for T-Mobile. On the Epic 4G, you take the back cover off, and here you have a micro SD slot for four memory, and it comes out of the box with a 16 gig micro SD card installed. So the Epic 4G has one meg of storage on the, excuse me, one gig of storage on the phone, and a 16 gig micro SD slot, uh, micro SD card uh, pre-installed in a slot. Now, since this is Android 2.1 at the moment, I think the Epic 4G can only handle 16 gig of uh, on an SD card. Uh, you can't use a 32 gig in a Android 2.1 phone. When this phone gets upgraded to Android 2.2 and that uh, uh, Samsung keeps promising that that will happen in the reasonably near future but uh, there's been no date given and they've kind of dangled that upgrade uh, like a carrot in front of Epic 4G users for some time now and they keep pulling it away. So when and if the upgrade to Android 2.2 occurs then you can use a 32 gigabyte micro SD card in this slot, then this phone will have 32 plus one internal for 33 gig versus 16 gig uh, on the Nexus S. Right now, this has 17, one internal plus the 16 micro SD card, uh, and this has uh, 16 gig of storage. So 17 gig of storage out of the box versus 16 gig of storage. That's not much of a difference. While we're looking at the backs of these phones, notice they have cameras the Samsung Epic 4G has got a 5 megapixel camera and it can do 720p HD. Notice that it's got a single LED flash. The Google Nexus S also has a 5 megapixel camera with a single LED flash but it can only do standard definition or maybe we'll call it enhanced definition like DVD definition not high definition that you get with the Epic 4G. So that is some of what these phones have. Um, now we've talked about how this has Android 2.1 and the Nexus S has Android 2.3. Uh, one of my favorite tests, and I like to do it during Schmackdowns, is I like to run Quadrant and show the results of Quadrant. Now I loaded Quadrant here onto the Nexus S, but unfortunately it doesn't run on Android 2.3. I was able to get it to run once and I got a result of around 1650. That is a really good result. 1650 on a Quadrant test is very good. However, I was only able to run it once and ever since then it's not been able to run it successfully. On the Epic 4G, Quadrant scores typically come in around 950 or so. So you've got 950 versus 1650 and, and frankly I think that the Nexus S might even be a little higher than 1650 if I could run additional tests. That's a huge difference. So the internal processing speed win here goes to the Nexus S. Uh, uh, the, the quadrant score that I was able to get just once was much higher and that indicates a higher processing capability here on the Nexus S. Now when this gets upgraded, when the Epic 4G gets upgraded to Android 2.2, I expect that the quadrant score will go up a substantial amount. It might go up to 1200 or 1300, but uh, I don't think it's going to be quite in the same uh, class as the, what I did see on the Nexus S for the one time I was able to test it. Even still I'm going to go ahead and touch Quadrant because I want to go ahead and take a look at the system information on both of these phones. You can see that the Nexus S is running Android 2.3 versus 2.1 on this phone. The CPUs, both of these have ARM V7 processors Rev2 both of these are running at 1000 megahertz, we'll call that 1 gigahertz. Uh, both of these 
have a similar amount of memory available to the processor. I believe each phone comes with 512 megabytes of RAM, and after that, uh, RAM is a portion for various activities. There's, as you can see, 555 or so left here, and 333 or so left here. That's uh, pretty much an even Steven wash there. And finally, the uh, display on both of these phones you can see is 480 by 800 pixels with a refresh rate of 68 hertz. Uh, most normal LCD phones will have a refresh rate of 60 hertz. That makes the 68 hertz on these uh, Galaxy S phones with their Super AMOLED screens look even better. It makes the, the uh, display look much smoother and much more uh, pleasing to the eye. Well, that's the information that I was able to glean from running uh, the uh, Quadrant benchmark on these. Unfortunately, I can't really benchmark the Nexus S. Both of these are very good phones. It, when the Epic 4G, when and if it gets upgraded to Android 2.2, then from a performance standpoint, it'll be much closer to the Nexus S, although it'll still be a little distance away. One final differentiation between these two phones, the Nexus S runs on uh, T-Mobile's HSPA standard, excuse me, HSPA uh, 3G network. So HSPA provides for very nice 3G speeds. I have seen download speeds from T-Mobile in the 3 megabit range on the Nexus S. 3 megabits for internet downloading is a very, very nice speed. Also, this has a, a wonderful um, Wi-Fi and tethering capability, so you can make this a Wi-Fi hotspot, and it works beautifully well. It's very easy to set up. I took it home and, and used it at home for a while. Worked absolutely perfectly, and when you're in a spot with good 3G reception on T-Mobile, uh, the Wi-Fi hotspot in this is, is really very nice. Uh, if you share it with other people, they'll be pleased with the internet response that you can get. Now, there's also a Wi-Fi hotspot and tethering available on the Epic 4G. Uh, and the big news, of course, is that this is a 4G phone on Sprint's 4G WiMAX network. So while this tops out roughly around 3 megabits, this is going to top out above 10 megabits. And when you turn on that, that Wi-Fi hotspot capability and you're in a 4G area on Sprint, you are going to have pretty steaming Wi-Fi hotspot activity. So um, when it comes to internet connectivity, the Epic 4G definitely has the win over the Nexus S. The Nexus S has perfectly good 3G capability from T-Mobile. But uh, 4G, really, when you're in a 4G hotspot, uh, 4G area from Sprint, the 4G is going to beat the 3G from T-Mobile every time. So that kind of wraps up this, uh, this Wirefly Schmackdown. We didn't get into a lot of details on the phones. Both of these phones have the same sorts of things that you usually like. You can do your email on both. You can get to your Facebook on both. So uh, they both have that sort of thing. They both work beautifully and smoothly and feel like very quality devices. If you want a keyboard, the Epic 4G is your keyboard friendly phone. It's got a great keyboard. If you don't want a keyboard, if a keyboard makes the phone too bulky for you, and I can understand why that's the case, the Nexus S is a perfectly good choice. It's on T-Mobile. It gets good 3G reception on T-Mobile. If you want the 4G speed that the Sprint has, uh, you, then the Epic 4G is one of your best choices, especially if you want a keyboard. So, who's the winner here? These phones kind of target two different classes of people. These are the, the technophiles, the people who love the latest technology, the people who want that look and sleek feel that the Nexus S has. It's very sleek, and just look at that display. Blacks are deep black. This has got the same kind of uh, deep black display, but very classy, these uh, Super AMOLED displays on the Samsung phones. If you want a phone that's maybe more productivity oriented because of the keyboard, the Epic 4G is a great choice. And we all have our fingers crossed that it's going to get upgraded to Android 2.2 in the near future. So who wins this smackdown? You know, hard to say. If you want the best in technology, then the Nexus S is your choice. If you're the technical guy who wants the latest in techn technology, or technical gal for that matter, that's your choice. If you're a productivity person, if you are on your email all the time, if you're uh, responding to, to messages, 
then the sliding keyboard that comes with the Epic 4G is perhaps the best on any Android phone. The biggest downfall over here is that it's still stuck with Android 2.1. When it goes to Android 2.2, now you're going to see performance in the same ballpark as the Nexus S, especially with the 4G download speeds you can get from Sprint. Hey, this is Bob here at Wirefly. Thanks for watching.